Kerbal Space Program 2's first major content update for science is arriving next week. Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and in this video I'm going to be going over why you should be excited for the release, the new additions that the update will be bringing, such as Exploration Mode, and why this update might just be the kick that KSP2 needs to come back to life. I'm going to switch our game mode. Uh, to exploration mode. Exploration is a new game mode being added in the Force Science update, and let me preface this section by saying this is all speculation. Obviously the update isn't out yet, I'm just going on what the devs have said. So take this with a pinch of salt, we'll all be finding out what's up next Tuesday anyway. That being said, the actual gameplay footage that the devs have showed us already has got me very excited. And I'm gonna start off with a very key point, and that is the gameplay loop. It's a good loop! What I mean by this is that prior to this this update, there isn't one. It's just a sandbox. You have no preset goals. There's nothing to do that progresses the game in any way other than goals that you set yourself. This was something another game suffered from at launch, a game you may have heard of, No Man's Sky. And well, if that game wasn't the turnaround of the century, I don't know what is. Not having an actual gameplay loop left a lot of players frustrated and not really sure what to do with the game. But now with having a tech tree and science to gain, there's reasons to go visit all the different places in the system. It has also also been mentioned that new points of interest have been added as well. Discoverable is a point of interest, a one-time unique point of interest that is very vividly different from everything around it. Making it even more rewarding to explore new areas. With the addition of this new mode, hopefully that will provide a bit of longevity to the game. Rather than making your own fun, you're actually given something fun to do. I would talk more on this, but I think feature lead Tom Venator sums it up pretty well. There is a actual game and there is a reason to do things there's motivation and you can build the big the big rocket of your dreams and actually there's a point to it those last few words being very critical indeed there is now a point to kerbal space program 2 something that was sorely missing exploration mode isn't just adding science though unfortunately it was only briefly touched upon in the dev update video but there is a new mission system too and from what we were shown it looks to be exploration is somewhat of a cross between career and science mode from the first game except this time when you complete missions you don't get a monetary reward, you get science. The only mission we saw picked up in the video was first launch, so I can't really delve more into this, but I certainly am hoping it's a little bit more structured than KSP1's contracts. For any of you that saw my farewell videos, landing and returning from EVE straight after a moon landing, we thought it was moon, and then we were told it was mun, and no, no one remembers that. Hey, I remember that. It's pronounced moon. It used to have an umlaut. Anyway, more structure please. Aside from missions, a tech tree, and science to gain, there are a few things that exploration mode looks to do better than science mode in KSP1. In the first game it was pretty well known that you never had to leave the Kerbin system in order to unlock the entire tech tree. If you really wanted to you could just spam all of the biomes on the moon, Minmus and Kerbin and unlock enough science points to complete the tree. Although personally I found it less tedious and a bit easier if you did go into planetary. However that is something that has been addressed in for science. The other thing that I'm really pleased with with the tiering system we kind of give exponential rewards to push you prompt you to go out further and further into the Kerbolar system. The tech tree in KSP2 has four tiers, each one progressively more costly than the previous, and that means to unlock some of the late game tech, you are going to have to go into planetary for those sweet science gains. Not being able to finish the tech tree in one mission to Minmus will certainly give the game more longevity, and be incentive to further explore the whole Kabola system in the game. Um, well, there's four tiers at the moment, but who knows, with the introduction of interstellar content later down the line, maybe we'll see this number increase. From first inspection, I really like the new tech tree. It appears to be much more organised than the tree in the first game, where you started from one node, okay that hasn't changed, and branched out to the end. This time round, all key parts you'll need to play the game can be unlocked on the top row, with more specialised parts such as heat shields branching off from the top line, and those are now going to have a use because heat is being added. Although the recent video on the Intercept Discord shows that it still might need a little bit of work, as the visual effects here certainly don't look as polished as they did in the previous clip. I'm sure that will be worked on though, especially upon hearing of a new 
addition to the KSP2 dev team, Blackrack. Okay, so I know Blackrack isn't really related to re-entry effects, but they are widely known from KSP1 for creating some of the most stunning visual mods, and already in KSP2's 0.1.5 update, you can see some of their work. They did a community post recently highlighting some of the challenges with adding atmospheric scatter to the game and how to make the game look better, and with their experience of doing this, I'm pretty hopeful that the game will end up looking much better than it already is. They certainly did a number on the first game. It's all a bit too much technical jargon for me to fully understand, but I'll leave a link in the description to the post if you fancy going and checking it out yourself. I want struts. I like I like to have a strut. Yes, Nate, because up until this point, they were necessary to launch anything slightly larger than a disheveled mallard. <laughs> Seriously, the wobble in Kerbal 2 is one of the biggest points of contention. Nobody likes it, it makes flying a chore, and sometimes downright impossible. This is, however, something that has been addressed in Force Science. I couldn't find any footage on this bar a Matt Lounshaw, but there have been multiple instances of the dev team saying that the problem has been mostly resolved. Plus, what Matt showed did look pretty convincing. The whole wobble fiasco is one of the reasons I stopped playing and went back to KSP1 for a long time. It just made the game really unfun for me, spending hours designing a large vehicle only for it to shake itself to bits and flop all over the place, like an immaculately cooked piece of Tesco's finest spaghetti. The way the wobble fix seems to work is to implement an auto strut like feature from the first game. This even comes with a menu to turn it off and on, along with another few options so if you're a complete psychopath and enjoy the dance of the limp noodle then you might be in luck, as it looks like the feature may be toggleable. There were of course other reasons why I dropped the game, as mentioned already not enough to do, a plethora of bugs and KSP1 just running better and being more fun. It's a well-known fact that KSP2 on launch ran as well as me in sports lessons back in my school years. That's to say, improvement was needed. I have covered the performance of the game in several videos now, and in patches prior to the 0.2 update, did notice a dramatic increase in FPS that I was getting. At the game's release, many people were unable to play at all, because the minimum specs for the game were pretty steep. Thankfully, the dev team have provided some very nice infographics on the performance increases on this update, compared to the game at that time. And if we go on what they've said, the increase is pretty dramatic, in some cases nearly tripling the amount of FPS at certain points in the game, and for the majority of cases, at least doubling it. It does appear that the people at Intercept are really trying to focus on optimization, and I'm optimistic huh? that this is not the end of the line, and further down the development process we see even more gains, especially when we get to building massive colonies and interstellar vehicles. Those are going to be big, and this game suffers the same problem as the last one. If you build big, it can bring the game to a complete crawl. From someone that's launched a fully fueled Saturn V to the surface of Mars, I know. I can't really say much more on the performance without actually playing the update, but it does look promising, and I have already seen improvements from the previous patches. I'll also mention bugs here though, and I guess I've already addressed one talking about floppy noodle rockets. But checking on the curb update that is occasionally put out, there does seem to be quite a few fixes incoming. I know since my first video on the game, there already have been quite a few fixes implemented. I, for one, am very happy I can finally see my trajectory when entering a new sphere of influence. But once again, without patch notes and playing the update, there's not much more to cover on this topic other than saying I'm already pretty pleased with the fixes we have received. So the big new gameplay feature is of course exploration mode, but there are some other things I want to touch upon which are going to be added in this update. It would be a bit of a poor title if you couldn't do any experiments in for science, but luckily that is of course one of the main features, and gaining science on flights in my opinion looks to be quite a bit better than the stock KSP1 system. A new experiment tab has been added to the left toolbar while in flight, and this flashes when you come across a new biome to harvest science from. I said the stock system before because this feature was a mod in KSP1, but it's sure nice that it's now in the stock game. It looks like just clicking the button when encountering a new area is enough to run all experiments on board the craft, although I can't be sure because the example given in the video contained just a crew observation. I'm hopeful though, as trying to clip through your ships in the first game to find that one mystery goo that you just had to place in a really awkward location was not fun. I like the use of use that this seems to provide. Similar to the first game, or more exactly the same to KSP1, SP1 is that science comes in two forms, transmittable and recoverable data. So once again, if you want to get all the science you can achieve, you're going to need to return to Kerbin and deal with the new deadly atmosphere. In this game, this is distinguished by data and samples. Samples you need to return, data you can freely transmit. As was in the original, returning samples do seem to give you a lot more science, as in the video the data was worth 6 points, whereas the sample, 108. Although the numbers here were mentioned to be slightly off and already fixed before the 
the update ships. Another addition that I quite like, being a massive fan of the Kerbalism mod in KSP1, is it appears that experiments are no longer done instantly. I'm not too sure on this though, as the only example given of this in the video may have been a byproduct of the animation played when science is collected. That animation takes time to perform, so maybe that's why the experiment took 10 seconds. I really prefer the Kerbalism system in the first game, and find it makes the game much more immersive as a result of having to wait time for certain experiments to complete. I also really like the animation, I mean, that's one thing this game has done right. The animations and this one for collecting science is no different. I mean, look at it, how awesome is that? So we won't be getting much sciencing done without new science parts, and these are going to be added with the update. And they're new parts, and they're cool. I like them. They've got they've got dealy bobs on them and and bit boops and and you hit the button and they work and they get you the, they get you the thing. <laughs> yeah. It's science. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, but we are going to be getting some new parts to play with. Another thing I stumbled upon while scripting this and researching was it looks like we also finally have thrust to weight ratio info per stage in the vehicle assembly building. This is something I desperately wanted, and there were mods for KSP2 to include this, but once again, great that it's now made it into the stock game. It also looks like it might be planet specific too, as it mentions Kerbin Vac on the image, and I wonder if that new blue cogwheel on the side lets you change it. I would be very happy if if that were the case. And of course, re-entry heating, but I spoke about that earlier. One thing I always see on the Kerbal Space Program Reddit when new players come along to ask for help is this. Play science mode, and the reasoning for this is pretty solid. In science mode, you unlock parts as you need them. You're not given everything all at once and overwhelmed with the amount of choice you have. It's a tutorial in its own way by slowly introducing new concepts and features. And now with exploration mode, we have this once again in Kerbal Space Program 2. Anyone new coming to the game might have a better time of it if they decide to start out with this new mode rather than jump straight into the deep end with Sandbox. Force Science is arriving next week on Tuesday the 19th of December, and you can be sure that from then I'll be sinking my teeth into it and trying to pull off some crazy things. Nate Simpson wondered in the video if Matt could get to Elu with the first no tech. I want to see if I can go even further than that. Say, Tylo landing? I don't think there's a more challenging place to go in the game than that. The update looks incredibly promising though, and I hope it brings back some of the audience that were dissuaded by the original launch, and I hope that this is the start of a new leaf in KSP2's book. Really, it boils down to this, and the reason I think you should be excited for science in KSP2 is that it's an actual game now. There will be things to do, places to see, science to get, after all, this was a triumph. I'm making a note here, huge success. It, hang on, wait, that's the end of Portal. And now I'm going to have Still Alive in my head for the rest of the day. A big thanks to Y Mandarin, Darth Malakor, Mr. Blue Star, Ryan Miller, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.